we'll head to one of the darkest regions of our state, at White Rock Conservancy near Coon Rapids. Amateur astronomers from across Iowa and neighboring states gather each year for the Iowa Star Party. It's a weekend full of stargazing, astrophotography, and conversation at the legendary Garst Farm. And for one night, a chance to share an interstellar hobby with curious guests. It's a hot, late summer afternoon, and amateur astronomers are setting up their telescopes in an empty pasture known as the Star Field at White Rock Conservancy. The skies are clear, and there's a long night of good stargazing ahead. Tonight we'll be able to probably look at Saturn for a little while before it gets behind the trees, and you just love that moment of, oh, wow, <laughs> you can see the rings. You hear that over and over. You never get tired of hearing that. First time you see Saturn is a memorable experience with everybody. For many of the participants, observing the universe is a hobby and a passion. It's a treasure hunt in the sky. Lots of different things you can do. Some just like to look, some like to take notes, some like to take pictures. Uh, it's a wide, wide gamut. The telescopes range from small to large, simple to complex, homemade and reasonably priced to very expensive. Some are ideal for looking at stars and planets. Others are designed for viewing galaxies and nebula. For beginners, you can even get started with a pair of binoculars. The light bounces off the big mirror and it comes up to the secondary mirror. One night each year, the public is invited to the Iowa Star Party. People young and old get a basic lesson in Astronomy 101 and learn how to use a star chart. Then, once it gets dark, they have the chance to walk around the star field look through the many different telescopes, and explore the wonders of the skies in new ways. The amateur astronomers are on hand to help guide the viewing and answer any questions. We're actually looking at light that uh, is, uh, left there about 40 minutes ago. It's, it's over a billion miles away right now. And you know when it gets darker, there are some beautiful deep skies, some clusters and galaxies we would love to show you. White Rock Conservancy is an ideal location because there's very little light pollution from nearby towns or cities. A darker sky means better viewing. Astronomers can see things here that they could never see from their own backyard in a city. So many people now live in places where you can't even see the sky. And it's, it's not a big tragedy compared to other things that are happening in the world, but it is a loss of beauty, and that's a shame. You see it? And that's something now. Now look out to, uh, from the, to the left of the ring, about four or five diameters from the ring, you'll see a faint speck of light. Right. That's its largest moon, Titan, no way. which is bigger than our moon, actually. But it could be up to a million stars in that ball. They're all swarming around each other like a hive of bees just spinning around. Uh, you see the different galaxies way off in the distance, and you just can't imagine what, you know, you don't know if there's life out there or what's going on out there, but. That's kind of neat to see the distant galaxies. That little telescope's in there, I gotta be able to look through just to find Polaris. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> it's the beauty of the sky. I've always loved it since I was a kid. And I've gone through the visual observing. I've had a number of telescopes. I just love to look at the sky and the things in the sky. And now I've moved on to a new phase of it, imaging. It's expensive, it's frustrating, but when it works, it's so much fun. I love it. Astrophotography, the art of photographing the skies, is growing in popularity. Amateur astronomers spend hours and hours capturing still images that wow with beauty, grandeur, and artistry. No, I actually got into astronomy and astronomy got me into photography. I saw, you know, all the great images and said, wow, I want to do that, so. So I do more of the wide field stuff, um, where I'll actually have my camera with a regular lens just piggybacking on the telescope. A lot of the other guys do what's called prime focus, where they'll have the camera hooked onto where the eyepiece normally goes, and you're using the telescope itself as the lens. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but what I usually do is uh, I use a digital a DSLR, a Canon 450D. I've advanced a little, that's why there's two scopes here. Normally I have my guide scope on this side, and this one tracks the stars. It's got a camera that goes to the computer and there's software that can lock onto a star and make sure if that star starts to drift in any direction, it'll send commands to the mount and tell the mount to compensate for that and keep the stars centered. 
Meanwhile, the, uh, the digital cameras here taking the pictures, usually I take five or 10 minute uh, sub images. And then at the end of a couple hours of, of that, I'll take all those images and then in, in software, I can add them together. With a good eye and the right technique, the stunning work of amateur astrophotographers rivals what some professionals produce. From the sun, to other stars and star clusters, planets like Saturn and Jupiter, and even galaxies. The experience is eye-opening and awe-inspiring. A new group of budding amateur astronomers is hooked by the curiosity of what is out there in the universe. Everybody has a little bit different story to tell about what their interest is, and it's kind of neat seeing that. I like how it looks so different on Earth, and it looks really different when you're looking through a telescope in space. Something that I think everybody should experience just once because it is huge out there, and we have to look beyond just us. There are several amateur astronomy clubs and associations all across Iowa. Some have their own observatories, and many of them host regular public viewing opportunities. If you're interested in stargazing, it's a good way to get involved and continue learning. The best thing you can have as a beginning astronomer is a friend. <laughs>